Welcome folks. Till the last lesson, we saw how to use the Threads API to execute tasks. Starting from this lesson, we'll learn about how to do the same thing using the executors framework. As discussed in the previous lessons in this section, there are multiple ways to create and start threads using the Threads API. However, when it comes to the executors framework, our job is made much easier. There is technically only one way to execute a task in a separate thread of execution. First, we need to create a task that we want to run in a separate thread by implementing runnable interface or extending thread class like we normally do, and then provide it to an executor service, and that's it. The executor service automatically creates a thread and runs our task in that thread for us without us having to create a thread object and start the thread explicitly. We do not need to deal with the low-level APIs of the threads directly. Instead, we control the threads through executors only. We need to create executor service only once and then we can keep throwing tasks at it for execution throughout our application's execution lifetime. Executors are the preferred way of executing tasks since JDK 1.5. They optimize multi-threading capabilities of Java and improve the application's efficiency through optimal utilization of resources. Thread creation has some amount of CPU overhead. So, it is wasteful to create a new thread every time we need to execute a task. That is why Executor Service uses thread pools internally in which the threads are recycled and reused. In some of the executors, the threads are also allocated upfront. All that is required to do now is to provide one or more tasks to the executor for execution. In this way, the executor framework decouples the task submission from thread creation and management process. Now, each thread in the pool, after executing a task, picks up the next task from a task queue and executes it. The threads continue to do so till the queue becomes empty. After that, the threads just block on the task queue and wait for more tasks. If all the tasks have been executed and you don't need to execute any more tasks or the application is going to be shut down, then you need to tell the executor service that its services are no longer required by calling its shutdown method. This will shut down the executor service and it will stop accepting any new tasks for execution. If required, you can also instruct the executor service to interrupt all the running tasks and shut down immediately. This can be done by calling its shutdown now method. This brings us to the end of this lesson. In the next lesson, we will learn about some interfaces and classes that we use often while working with executors. See you there. Thank you.